Hey, what's up? This is Kevin Ellup from ksound.com here representing Studio One Expert. Appreciate you guys for following the video along. This is the fourth week. We, we, we're going to pretty much put the icing on the cake on this one. Okay, so what we're going to do here is add ear candy, a couple of effects, transition, you know, those type of things. And uh, we, we, we're going to just kind of glue everything together. So just to refresh your memory, this is sort of what the beat sound like. It may sound a little different from the last time I showed you guys. So... What we're going to do now is uh, something I love to use, which is by Output.com. You guys check them out. They have awesome plugins and i use them for inspiration all the time we're going to add this all the way down here to, to the bottom they have several plugins that they have that is pretty dope i have the xl this one i use for mostly all of my vocals and um i get a lot of ideas and inspiration from this from this plugin a lot of times i will even start using excel first you know that big question about what instrument should you start off with? Should you start off with the with the with the chords or the melody or whatever, or should you start off with the drums? You know, sometimes I start off with the vocals. You know, it just really depends on. Um, you can get inspiration from any and everywhere. So. I found the loop here that I thought was pretty cool. And, and a lot of times what I would do here, what you guys will see me do is actually take a sound, record it and bounce it in place because I'm going to find a bunch of ear candy and type things. And there's no need to have several instances of XL here to implement just one, you know what I'm saying? Something that's, that's, that could just be bounced down as one bounce or a wave file you know what i'm saying so um so this is what we're going to do here two three four we'll make sure you quantize it first then we can bounce it It's going to look low because of the volume. As a matter of fact, let's go back, bring the volume up a little bit more all the way up. A lot of times I'll try to do like a pre-mix before I bounce it to see how well it fits in the mix. And then I'll bounce it like that. But I have to keep in mind that when I do that, it's going to bounce out very small. So I'd rather be able to, you know, have all of the meat in my in, in in my region and turn it down later you know what i'm saying how will i add this found this little sound it's, it's like a it's not like a string to me but it's called bass awkwards so i call it string awkwards right 
So what I want to do here is instead of adding the EQ, we're going to actually render it onto the actual WAV file itself. And then um, so that they won't, you know, conserve power, or whatever. It's, it's also another way of, of bouncing, like rebouncing this WAV file again without this here because the um, whatever we do to this plugin will be inserted into the track itself. But the cool thing about this is that it uh, if if I need to recall the settings and make changes at a, at a later time, I can do that. And so you just pretty much just grab it from here and hit your your Alt or Option key. I'm using the Mac, so I'm not really sure what that would be for a PC. But if you was to grab this and whatever whatever button that you press, it, it makes it turn. You know, it it makes it does that where it says add effects instead of just adding to the channel add effects on to the actual then that's the, that's the button that you use <laughs> that's the best way i can explain that So I think that's where I want it. So we're going to go ahead and render that. And it's, it's like it's bouncing it in place in a sense. It's really what it's doing. It goes in the inactive state. More like bypass, but bypass is just bypassing the plugin. And the, and the plugin is still active on your channel. But if you go in inactive, you if you make that plugin inactive, that means it's, it's non-existent. It's not even there it doesn't require any resources so and so this is what this does and if i need to recall this i can always hit the restore button here and recall that setting at, at any time so we just adding some air canning here and there just kind of filling it up a little bit i add this to the second section of my song here i didn't bother to add this to my first the first section but you know because what you want to do is you want to make your song interesting and even though I have a bit going on right now. Um, it's very interesting because there's different things changing up here and there. I have a drop here and a climb that comes back in and bring everything back in. But still, it gets boring at the time. Repetitive is boring. So you want to do different things to each section. You know what I'm saying? So I'm introducing this new sound here that wasn't there before. It, as you can see, it's not here. I'm only putting it here. And so there are some other elements that I'm that I'm going to add that that they kind of make you know differentiate to the two sections here, um, which is pretty cool. You know, you don't want to add too much, but you want to add just enough just to make it interesting, right? So, um, and then you know this section right here alone kind of bridges the gap because this is the first time that this will ever happen in the song, which is the the drop, you know, and it kind of break you away from what you was listening to before because now. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much the same concept where everything comes in soft right here. You know what I'm saying? And, and we, we kind of do a build. But when we come here, same thing. But we add something different there. You know, kind of like shake it up a little bit. Yeah, you familiar with that. But how about we just throw this candy in there right quick just to make it, make it sweeter. You know what I'm saying? I want to rock with that one, right? We can make our own here just by using the automation function I showed you guys earlier, but I choose to um, just grab this and pull it down here. And I'm going to do something pretty unique to this as well, showing you guys that like, even though this sound cool, um, it's still somewhat not doing what I needed to do. And I kind of wanted to start it a little earlier, but what I'm going to do here, it sounds like it's early, like it, it sound early like it's like it's too fast right so what i'm gonna do is slow it down and we're going to use the time stretch function and pretty much like i say i'm on the mac so for me it will be going to the end of your region and hitting the option or alt key um, for you, if you're working on a PC, just go to the end of your region and hit whatever key. It may be control option. I'm not really sure what, what you guys have. All right, so I was looking for some type of boom sound. I forgot I did something on my own. 
it kind of sound like the boom came in really late so the climax is like there we go that's a little bit better kind of like that effect that it would give me towards the end although i'm unsure if this is the end or not but anyway we're going to stop right here i added too much here uh again keep in mind the artist that needs to go on and you know make make them do what they do or whatever but uh yeah yeah so i hope you guys enjoy the series i enjoy showing you guys my technique and how i go in about composing music and you know these, these type of things I, this is something i love i do it daily i encourage you guys if this is something you like to do and and you serious about it go in do what you got to do invest in yourself you can do a lot of what you just seen me do in the artist version fine so no excuses <laughs> again it was a pleasure my hat comes off to some of the greatest teachers in the game here on studio one expert again i'm kevin ellip from ksound.com remember music is art you're the artist paint your picture